Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Feature Friday, we're going to talk about iron lev levitation on existing rail. So let's dive deep into it. So why do we need something like this? Well, here's the deal. World needs better railway network. Every nation that has a brain is investing boatload of money on railway network. This is India's dedicated freight corridor. Yes, it's an electrical system with a double-decker carrying capacity. So every nation that really wants to grow needs to have a very good railway infrastructure. Unfortunately, while these systems are great, they cost boatload of money, meaning they are capital intensive. On top of that, they are also maintenance intensive, meaning you, you built it, everything is fine, everything is dandy, but it also means you have to keep spending money on it. So it does work, it's amazing, but it does have like a serious capital cost. So, and the primary reason, this is the one of the best of, uh, uh, one of the best method of moving bulk cargo from place A to B is simply because of lower rolling resistance compared to almost any other form. However, it is lower resistance, but it's not zero resistance, meaning if you compare this to an aircraft, it does not come close because again, it's not floating. So if you compare this system with maglev, maglev's primary uh, energy expenditure happens because of the wind and some amount of magnetic reluctance and also, but like majority of the fighting happens from the wind point, which again, same for aircraft, but you can do this on a railway if you have magnetic levitation. So, if you have wheels, before you reach that point where your atmospheric drag is starting to limit you, you will reach a limitation of the wheels, the friction, the bearings and all that jazz. So, there's a fundamental limitation. Like, can we push past it? Uh, if you are burning exponentially large amount of money and you are almost at unstable point, meaning it's uh, people won't be very comfortable at that speed. So, that's why we need something like this, but cheap. So Iron Left, this company basically, uh, what they are proposing is that they're going to use rare earth permanent magnet, meaning neodymium puppies, and uh, it will provide passive levitation, no power needed. Meaning, can we achieve maglevitism? Uh, mag yes, very easy. Maglev is a known technology for one century. We know how to do this, how to build this. The problem is active electronics that are needed is very expensive. Uh, so fundamentally, it's a very complex active system. We want something that is passive, meaning you do not think about it. Like in normal railway system, if you turn off the power, nothing bad happens. It's just like, okay, it's off. You turn it on, nothing happens. I don't know, if you move the motor, see, it moves. So it's passive. We want something passive. So they are achieving that passive status using rare earth permanent magnet. And because of the flux density required, the oomph required, you have to use rare earth. Normal iron magnet won't do it. So they are using that. Now be mindful, if you have worked with uh, magnetic bearings and things of that nature, you know for a fact they do work, but they are inherently unstable, meaning you would need some way to balance it out. So here they have rollers. Rollers are providing their um, balance, so to say. They're not the load bearing one. You may think, okay, the roller looks like, you know, oh, it's holding the load. It's not. It's just there to provide guidance. It's the same way if you have seen all those toys where you have a spinner that is floating on the magnet, but there is a pin that is stuck be, uh, behind the generally glass wall to stop it from rolling outwards. Same thing. It's just a, as a passive uh, stabilization system. Can you do it electrically? Yes. If you want absolutely floating system, you can do that. But again, then it backfires on you. You now again have a non-passive system. Rollers are far more passive. So they have to choose. It's not completely floating. It's not like true maglev where it's like not a single inch of contact. Now the selling point is, you can see normal railway track. They can just plonk it like a new bogey or new coaches. Plonk it, done. That's the whole point. Now, what will be the benefit? Reduce noise. You know, like, are they not touching? Uh, those contacts are not dumping load, so it's not uh, uh, bending the steel. But again, steel bending very little, but it does bend when you have like a few tons going every square inch. So there's a lot of noise coming there. You do not have that. And vibrations also is not happening. So this is the company. They have been working from Italy, if I'm not mistaken, for past few years. Uh, their first video was uploaded six, seven years ago. Then they went silent and now they are coming back to the news because they have actually done this full scale testing. So let's dive deep into it. So how the heck they are achieving this? Well, uh, the good news, it's a real, it's here, you can buy it. Uh, the company itself sells you the uh, roller kits that uh, you can use it. Now, rich people generally use this sort of roller kit for their fancy apartments where you have giant, super heavy doors that are like magnificent, but you're like, they're opening it like this, like a finger opening it, like how? That's, that's how they are achieving it. So you can buy this and you can even build this if you are good with mathematics, uh, as in like calculating how much magnetic flux is needed, how much magnetic material is needed, you can build this. So what they are doing is making a closed loop of permanent magnetic flux path, meaning 
magnet uh, is like electricity. Magnetic field is like electricity in one way. It seeks a path of low reluctance, meaning it does not want to go through air. It wants to go through something that is magnetic. So fundamentally, that's how magnet applies action to a part that is somewhere else. So and again, this is the core principle of switch reluctance motor. So if you have north and you have south, the flux wants to go from north to south as quickly as possible. It does not want to go through the long route. So if you give them a path, like a flux path, it will take shortcut to it, meaning it will physically apply force to it. Now you're like, okay, this looks it will work, but problem is, wouldn't it get stuck to one side or the other? Yes, that's why you need rollers. It will be uh, it will be stable in the center, but it won't be uh, stable enough where you're like, okay, I can push it. The moment you push it on any side, little bit here, little bit there, whoop, bam, it will get stuck there. So you need rollers for that. And it's a closed loop, so magnetic field is not jumping outwards. And again, that's a desirable factor. Otherwise, the amount of magnetic material needed would be too high. So achieve the closed loop, you do need to have a very high quality neodymium magnets and uh, the loop has to be closed. Now, how the heck they are achieving the floating part? Well, uh, thankfully, if you look into a profile of any railway, the path which will allow the most amount of flux to flow through is the head, this puppy, the head. So a benefit of that head is like it's it gets trapped, it gets magnetically impinged there. It's like flux is like, I want to flow through you. When, it, when you put load on it, it's like, no, 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 I want to flow through you. When it's like starts to lift up, it's like, no, 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 I want to pull down. So it reaches an equilibrium point. Same happening here. The steel rod that they uh, give you, that rod is acting as the main flux path. Energy wants to be always in that neutral point, where it's like flux is going. Most of the flux should go through here. So you can have metal below it like this, it won't affect it. You can have metal, little bit metal above it, it won't affect it. Although for, ro uh, for their rollers, they're not selling you this, they, they have a bar, which is cheaper. So that's how they're achieving the floating part. But again, not a stable system. Fundamentally, this system works, but if the reason we don't use it everywhere is not stable. It's not gonna stay there. So you need rollers. So you do not get like full, uh, what you call, floating point, but you do get uh, the magnetic level. Basically, load bearing capacity can be sorted. Now, this video is down below where you can buy this and they will show a very good demonstration. You can have like very heavy structure, almost 1.5 ton structure. You can just like, he, he, you can do that. So that's the design of it. It's a known technology. It has been done. You can build it if you know how to uh, build on off magnets quite easy. I have done that also. So do the calculation path properly and you can have no magnetic field outside and every magnetic field will be here. Everything will be awesome. <clears throat> So if the science works, what are their hopes? Their hope is they're gonna uh, replace normal wheel rail bogies. Now, if you watch their videos, they're a bit uh, optimistic with their stuff because they say post wheel society. I'm like, uh, that's getting a bit extra. You still have rollers. So <laughs> that's a bit too optimistic, but I get the point. Like they want to replace this wheel. Now reducing wear and tear on the railways uh, and the bogies, both of them, it's a desirable thing because whenever you see a track like this, you have to understand whenever trains are going, it's putting a serious amount of strain on a very small spot, even this high hardened steel has an upper limit. It's like, bro, it can't keep doing this forever. It cracks, it gets damaged. Again, that's why we have to keep replacing it. So imagine if the same amount of tonnage, you spread it over, let's say, one meter square, a steel track would be like, bro, I've got this. I'm good. I'm gonna, Instead of lasting, let's say, 30 years, it can last six, 70 years or even longer than that. And this is the same reason, like uh, why tanks can go through mud without getting stuck compared to other things. Why? It's just same amount of horsepower, but is spreading on a much larger area. So that's the whole point. The coupling is happening through the magnetic flux. So it's far more distributed, far more even, rather than having this concentrated eh. So it will reduce wear and tear on both puppies. So that's desirable. Lower energy requirement for locomotive, meaning how much oomph you have to spend it to move it, would go down. Meaning you can have the same locomotive instead of pulling, let's say, uh, you can either pull more load or you can pull at higher speed, same amount of energy. That would be desirable and it will make uh, rail travel attractive again. Now humanity is suffering from a point that we have reached post uh, consumer uh, society so to say. Our needs have been taken care of so we have reached that point. And the problem is that we want magical solutions now for everything so we, not, we are no longer excited for good or it works. We want magic. So if you are telling some people it's like hey what if we build high speed railway from point A to point B everything will be awesome. We know it. Of course it will be delayed but it will be done. It Of course it will be over expensive but it will be done and you will have something at the other end. People will be like no I don't want it. People want I want hyperloop. Sir it can't be built. No no I want hyperloop. Sir you will burn billions of dollars but it will not work. I want hyperloop oh, and you just burn billions of dollars. 
so you have to understand people want attractive things even at the cost of like does it actually work or not so what this company is trying to achieve is like hey railway people are nah it's ugly old technology no no magnetic railway everyone is like whoa so that's what they are trying to achieve where this like let's make railway attractive again where people will actually use a useful awesome technology uh, rather than chasing magical hulululu so that's the hope Now you may have paid attention to the fact that I was way too optimistic still for this far because here's the deal. Uh, I actually looked into it, looked into their patents, studied it, and all that, and I found a very serious lack of mention of eddy currents. This whole idea of moving magnets around—that's awesome. It does work again. I said, like you can just buy it. It's a known thing. It's just that nobody uses it for locomotion simply because it creates eddy current, and it is so strong. That's how maglev. moves in some electromagnetic design that's how they are doing it they are inducing magnetic field on the structure and that's how you are pushing it that's the fastest maglev that's how it achieves it it requires 100 kmph of speed then it creates enough eddy current on the tracks that is pushes it off so somehow this design is just like i'm not going to worry about it because it's a uh, basically what you call passive system is going to be there so how that you're moving it because that will convert into heat into the tracks now tracks are designed to be big thermal mass but again they are not designed to be heated electromagnetically uh, again electromagnetic being you are moving a permanent magnet using electricity so you may overheat the tracks may heat it to 300 degrees celsius or something like or worst case you simply may not be able to accelerate it because it will act like a magnetic brakes we use the same technology eddy current braking system roller coasters have the same system same design as a brakes so it finds it really weird the fact that they can travel high speed i'm like slow speed i can see it again you can buy it it's a thing but high speed no not even 100 kmph i'm like no because that's how people use it like this is thing you can buy and use it as a electromagnetic brakes so that's the issue another aspect is the this statement that it is compatible with normal railway it's bs no you cannot just replace this and put that there and be like okay why because all of these require switches where you change the tracks that's how it works a railway track is not like okay one continuous track it has switches it has segments you send it to platform you send it to bypass line it is a compulsory requirement of the design even with maglev you have to change the whole segment so because there is no scenario where you can have like okay i have one continuous loop it's not going to be realistic so you need switches and this system is a designed long like we spent almost 2 century of getting this design right so it's perfectly built because of the switches you are just bypassing the switch part where it's like no 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 i do not worry about the switches like dude you will need something like this and yeah these things are small generally used for cog wheel ra uh, railways where you can say like on a high mountainous region these are used and again these are super expensive system where you, that, that's why they are only used for small thing or you have to use maglev like structure where you just moving the whole tracks again your whole railway has to be redone if you have to redo the switches so fundamentally this whole statement that is like it's compatible with railway tracks is bs is like flat out bs i have no idea how the heck they can say it with their open faces like we are showing you on a railway track it's like bro show me it going through a switch because again uh, your ba uh, bearing rollers are fixed they cannot change the distance because again it will become unstable if you do so how will you go through uh, you know joints joint size in like the track joints uh, this is a different image so you see the point where they go from fish plate to fish plate it's like how so that's a very significant issue and if you have to change it you will end up in the same point where it's like might as well build a new railway another aspect is their tonnage is not impressive while they are what they are showing is awesome it could work in like low speed uh, freight operation in let's say shipyard to some fixed location i could see that that could be a viable thing but uh, the tonnage is not impressive the tons that they are quoting the numbers they are quoting is not wow because these things and you can see like is india's dedicated freight corridor electric locomotive giant pantograph and double loading so we pull some heavy load with these puppies so how will you pull heavy loads so that's why I, i'm like a, these two things are very big issues like assume and the best i could find is like their design minimizes eddy current i'm like minimizing eddy current does not remove eddy currents we <laughs> So I mean if they had said like till 100 kmph I would have bought it but they are like no at high speed I'm like high speed assumes more than 100 miles per hour generally yeah that's not happening so that's one of those things that I was like no on a fundamental level that part I'm like no another is like even assume let's say their magical design somehow does not create eddy currents or create so little that it's not an issue that could be true uh the switch part I'm like that was like no no 
you have to change switches and if you change the switches you will realize very quickly switches are the main expensive part very expensive part and these designs while they do exist the reason you don't see it everywhere it's so expensive even in uh, the wheeled sinkenshin as in like bullet train of uh, japan they also do not use this it's too expensive and so fundamentally there are some serious limitation i could see very limited use case but uh, do not see it like this oh we're going to replace a normal system i've seen other design that is trying to do that i'll cover that next week but this was iron lev so this was my presentation on iron lev magnetic levitation on normal railway tracks hopefully you guys have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching